Hi everyone, welcome back to ASFC Physics. What we're going to be looking at today are the Suva equations, also known as Newton's equations of motion. Now, what we have been mainly looking at so far has been average speed. To give you an example, let's say that we have a car moving on the motorway at 70 miles an hour, which is 31 meters per second. How far would it travel in, let's say, 5 seconds? So, in order to find that, we're just going to use the good old formula, the distance travelled is equal to the speed multiplied by the time, where S is the car's distance that's been travelled, V would be your average speed, and uh, T will be the time that, that has elapsed. Now, if the speed is constant at 31 meters per second, then the distance traveled in 5 seconds will just be 31 multiplied by 5, which is 155 meters that you would have traveled every 5 seconds if you were moving at 70 miles an hour on the motorway. Now, this equation has some limitations, mainly that it's only giving us the average distance uh, traveled by a constant force. Now this question has some limitations and they're mainly given by the fact that the velocity needs to be constant if we're going to be using that equation. Now what do we do if there is acceleration involved? For example, if we were to step up on the um, on the brake pedal and reduce the speed, how would we deal with that problem? Now, if we have a constant acceleration present, we can use the Suvat equations. You can find them in the formula sheet and you don't need to remember them, however, we'll be doing so much practice with them that we'll probably end up remembering them anyways. Let's have a look at those equations. V is equal to U plus AT. Well, if you think about it, that makes sense because AT is actually your increase in velocity. So that's just initial speed plus your increase in velocity. We have another one, S is equal to a half U plus V multiplied by T. Another one for S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. And finally, we have another one which is linking V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. All of those equations link the following quantities. They link S, which is your displacement. They link U, which is your initial velocity. V, the final velocity. A, the acceleration. And T, which is the time that has elapsed. And it's really important to know that these equations only apply if the acceleration is constant. Hence, they are the equations for linear motion. So if you have a case in which the force is variable, the acceleration is variable, uh, maybe there's drag which is constantly changing, you may not be able to apply those equations. Now let's see how we're going to apply the following uh, equations to a problem. So we drop a marble from rest, always worth just doing a little diagram. So this is our marble, we drop it from rest. It falls for a total of two and a half seconds and then it kind of just hits the floor. Uh, let's make sure the floor is drawn properly. Okay, so this over here is the floor and its flying time is two and a half seconds like so. Uh, find the speed at which it hits the ground. Okay, well, let's make a list of everything that we know and that we don't know about this problem. First of all, we drop the marble from rest. That means that its initial velocity is zero meters per second. Very often in SUVA problems, you won't be explicitly told that the initial velocity is zero. However, we need to infer that from the situation that we are dealing with. The final velocity, this is what we're looking for. So I'm just gonna leave a little question mark over here. The acceleration, well, we're going to use 9.81 meters per second squared because this is the acceleration of free fall on 
earth and in this case just uh, free fall we're assuming that there's no air resistance so um, the acceleration is just 9.81 meters per second squared and the time of flight in this case is two and a half seconds perfect so you can see that we have four quantities and one of them is unknown so we need to select an equation out of those four equations that has both u v a and t we can see that the first equation just here actually fits the bill perfectly so what i'm going to do is just write down v is equal to u plus a t we know that u is zero, we know that our acceleration is 9.81, and we know that our time is two and a half. And if we put that into a calculator, we're gonna get 24.525, which up to two significant figures will be 25 meters per second. Okay, now let's have a look at another example. Okay, now let's have a look at another example. So a plane has a takeoff speed of 77 meters per second, experiences an acceleration of 2.8 meters per second squared, calculate the distance it travels from starting from rest to takeoff. Okay, now as always, what we need to do is just make a little list of what we know in the question and what we're looking for. Now, S, this is what, in this case, what we're looking for. So we want to know the distance the plane will travel before takeoff. And it's starting from rest. So we know that our initial speed U will be zero meters per second. The very moment it takes off, the speed is 77 meters per second. We know that the acceleration is 2.8 ms to the power of minus 2. Okay, now we need an equation that has s, u, v, and a. We can clearly see that this last equation, v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as, clearly fits the bill. So what I'm going to do is just write that on the side. So v squared is equal to u squared plus 2 a s then what i'm going to do is rearrange for um for s so first of all 2 a s will be v squared minus u squared and finally s will be v squared minus u squared over 2 a now we can see that uh, u is equal to zero so i don't really need that term so i can just cancel this uh this U turn like so and what I'm left with really is that s is equal to v squared which uh, is 77 squared and I'm gonna need to divide that by twice the acceleration which is going to equal 2 times 2.8 Put that into a scientific calculator we're gonna get uh, 1059 uh, meters however this question in this question we're working up to two significant figures so this is going to equal 1.1 times 10 to the 3 meters okay folks so hopefully this example makes sense let's have a look at another one Also, you drop a pebble in a well and it takes on average 0.7 seconds for the object to reach the bottom of the well. What is the height of the well? Okay, so once again, let's uh, do our list. So if we were to drop it, uh, then we would assume that, we, that our initial velocity is equal to zero meters per second once again. Uh, we don't know our final velocity, uh, however, we're looking for the height of the well. So this is S, this is what we're looking for. The acceleration, because we're in free fall, is once again 9.81 meters per second squared. And we know that on average, it takes about 0.7 seconds for the pebble to reach the bottom of the well. So we have S like so so we we know that we're going to use either the first one or the uh, second equation so we know our s we know that u is equal to zero we know our t so 
know all of those things and we know the acceleration as well. So we can use this equation, for example, s is equal to ut plus a half a t squared. We know that we can't use the equation above, for example, because we don't know our final velocity. Okay, so let's uh, apply this equation. So I'm going to write it down. S is equal to ut plus a half a t squared, like so. We know that uh, u is equal to zero, so this term here can go. And um, we know that s, is, well, we're looking for s, so we're just going to leave that like so. This is going to equal a half times 9.81 multiplied by the time, which is 0 0.7 squared. So multiply by 0 0.7 squared. And if we put those numbers into a calculator, we're going to get approximately 2.4 meters up to two significant figures, which is not very deep at all. A racing motorbike that is traveling at 75 meters per second that's pretty quickly uh, when the rider presses the brakes until they're traveling at 40 meters per second after only three seconds what is their braking distance as always let's have a go at making a list so we're looking for the braking distance in this case we know that the initial speed is 75 meters per second we know the final speed is 40 meters per second. We don't know what the acceleration is and um, the time of uh, the, um, the time that elapsed in this situation is three seconds. Okay, well, we know that an equation which links the uh, initial velocity here, the final velocity and the time is the second equation. We can't use the third equation because we don't actually know the value of the uh, of the acceleration. Um, if we were to find that initially and then use uh, the third equation, that's absolutely fine. However, it would be much quicker just to directly use the second equation. So I'm just going to write that over here. So s will be half times u plus v multiplied by t. So in this case, s will be half times u, which is 75 plus 40. And the whole thing is multiplied by 3. And if we put that into a scientific calculator, we are going to get 170 meters up to two significant figures. Uh, so let's have a look at our final example. We have a plane which touches down at 80 meters per second. Calculate how long does it take for the plane to reach a speed of 5 meters per second if the deceleration experiences is 3 meters per second squared. Okay, now in this case, as always, let's start making a list. So the initial speed is 80 meters per second. This is what we know, 80 meters per second. We know that the final speed is 5.0 meters per second. We know that the plane experiences deceleration at a rate of 3 meters per second squared, which means that in this case, this is just negative acceleration, which is opposite to the direction of motion. So minus 3.0 ms to a power of minus two. Okay, and um, we're looking for the time. In other words, calculate how long does it take? So we're looking for t. Okay, so we have u, v, a, and t, which uh, it means that we're gonna have to use the first equation. So let me just write the first equation. V is equal to u plus a t. And let's plug in some, some values. Uh, our v, our final velocity is 5.0. Our initial velocity is 80. Our acceleration is minus 3. Remember, deceleration simply means negative acceleration. So minus 3 multiplied by the time t. Now, um, what I'm going to do is just bring the this factor of minus 3t. If I bring that on the left-hand side, this is going to turn to 3t. So 
3.0 times t plus 5.0 is going to equal 80 and finally I'm just going to bring the 5 onto the other side so what I'm going to get is 3.0 times t is going to equal 80 minus 5 which is just 75 which means that the time will just be equal to 75 divided by 3 which is just going to equal 25 seconds. So it's going to take for this particular plane about 25 seconds for it to decelerate from a touchdown speed of 80 meters per second until it reaches 5 meters per second which is a lot more manageable. Okay folks, so hopefully you've made uh, progress with the super equations in this video. If there are any questions please feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing.